You know me, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Yesterday's episode was rough. Going out in the preliminary round of the CONCACAF Champions Cup for the fourth year in a row. So we need to keep our eye on the prize. We need to get back to the competition. We've got 12 matches left in the closing stage. And our run-in begins now. <laughs> Welcome back, one and all, to episode number 44 of the American Dream. I'm Mr. Cellophane. If you've enjoyed the series so far, make sure you hit like and subscribe and do all of the things to feed the algorithm and get this video out to as many people as humanly possible. Thank you very much for all the support you have given so far. It's not all doom and gloom. We've played 10 matches of the closing stage of the Premier Division de Costa Rica. We are still at the top of the table, sitting on 24 points, although we have lost our last two in the league. We're not even talking about that other competition right now. We're taking on Sporting FC. They're currently sitting sixth place, nine points behind us. We're maintaining a three-point lead over Punta Arenas and Herediano. Herediano just picked up a loss in their last match, so we are enjoying a game in hand. So we have an opportunity to at least get something done and get this ship back on the right track. Yes, I do so love when I mix my metaphors. Cortez is going to get the starting goal. He actually wasn't that bad. Gave up the three goals, one of them a penalty in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Can't really blame him. Kevin Chamorro picked up one of the league losses. So it hasn't been all that bad for Cortez. Hopefully he can step things up, though. His average rating is not fantastic. Our back four today is going to consist of Freddy Gonzalez, Ronald Ngubame, Gerald Taylor and Hugo Cordero, the 18-year-old we picked up in the transfer window. He is going to get the start as our right back. Brandon Chacon will man the midfield. Elian Casadathorn and Ramon will be out on the wings. Manning the number 10 is going to be Diego Moreira, sitting in support of Esteban Cordero. Cordero getting the start over Emilio Lopez, who is recovering from an injury. Both players sitting on 15 goals co-team leaders we have put the ball in the back of the net this year we just have not done so recently we're also back to our original tactic the experiment in the second leg of the CONCACAF Champions Cup yeah we probably shouldn't have done that but you know what lesson learned uh, Pineda grabbing the ball out of the air and he'll get things started for sporting we are in our white kits with the purple sleeve. Chacon in control, feeding it ahead. Cordero wide for Romero. He's got a runner in Marrera. He picks him out, takes it deep. Side angle shot will hit off of the post, and Sporting will take over. Again, we are living and learning. The team is still trying to bed themselves into our tactical setup. Yes, they ran a 4-2-3-1 before we got here. Obviously, it was different as far as the instructions and the roles were concerned. So it will take a couple more matches at the very least. Hopefully, by the end of this string of 12, we will have figured it out and we'll move into that playoff stage, which I'm not 100% sure how it works or what it's going to look like, but I'm fairly certain at this point that we're going to be involved in that. We also... On 71 points for the entire year through 32 matches are sitting at the top of the overall table. How it all fits together, though, we are going to have to see. Corner kick opportunity coming up for Sporting. Navarro to take it. Now, we are on the road. One of the reasons why we went back to our original tactic is this is another one of those short but wide pitches, much like the one where we play in Saprissa. So, hopefully we'll be able to find that success. And while we haven't looked sloppy in the first 30 minutes or so, we haven't looked incredibly sharp as well. Casada keeping with it, feeding it up the right wing. He's got Ramon with a little bit of space across into the box. Casada Thorne will track that down as Navarro is unable to clear it. Lays it off for Bran across Chacon, met with resistance from Perez, so we'll play it back to Gubane. Chacon, once again, being marked rather tightly, so he'll just play it back to his goalkeeper. But Cortez getting it restarted quickly. Nugbane up to Quesada Thorne. His cross finds Cordero. He will find the back of the net for the 16th time this year. And finally, Saprisa taking a lead. I honestly don't think I've been so happy to score a goal, any goal. Just a minute or so later, Quesada Thorne feeding Ramon, has it knocked away. Cordero gets it back. Nice pass through the Ramon into the middle. Cordero's got it. 
turns, fires, hits the defense. Bran on the rebound will knock it wide. But another good opportunity as Saprisa finally is starting to look and feel like the team that played the first 10 matches of this uh, closing stage in the Primera División. Ramon with another corner kick in the waiting moments of the first half. Unfortunately, unable to get the header on that. It's cleared. Marrera will track it down. Chacon feeding Ramon up the right wing. Ramon chipping it back post. Casada Thorn charging in and just too strong on the header. It will go over. And that's where the first half is going to come to an end. Eight shots to six in favor of Sporting. They've actually managed to hit the target six times. And they are leading in possession and XG. So we are getting outplayed still slightly, but we are leading where it counts. Esteban Cordero, 16th goal of the year, giving Saprisa the 1-0 lead. And one of the things this recent losing streak has done is it has eroded the squad's confidence in us as a manager. They're not nearly as impressed with us now as they were, say, three, four weeks ago when we were on a nice winning run. Hopefully we can get that faith back and start getting a little bit more e efficacy out of our out of our team talks. Gonzalez to Bran. Quesada Thorn, his cross is blocked. Bran's got it. Looking back post, Ramon! There he is. There's the Ramon we all know and love. Seventh goal of the season. It was a beautiful delivery by Bran and Ramon just getting the best of the defender, getting Great positioning and a beautiful header. Like that inside position that he took was just absolutely magical. And there was nothing that Pineda could absolutely do about it. But a corner coming up, sporting. Navarro sending it in. Ortiz can't win the header. But Rubiano will track it down at the edge of the box. Drops for Navarro with a bit of space. Carrying it in. Ortiz with a shot will tuck it inside. That far corner, Jonathan Ortiz, his second goal of the year to bring one back for sporting. And this is what happens when you cannot clear the box off of a set piece. You're going to find yourself outnumbered and out opportunized. Is that even a word? But Jonathan Ortiz making it 2-1. Saprisa is still leading off of the ensuing kickoff. We are in control. If we can get it back here, then that will go a long way. Except Estarita is going to pick it off. Drop it for Castillo. Feed it forward. He's got Cordoba waiting for men to get in the box. There are three. Rojas is one of them. Gubane, though, able to clear it. Casada Thorn, his pass up for Cadero, not strong enough. Trying to pick it off again, but Navarro will end up winning the battle. Drop for Vitar Mendez. Cortez, again for Cordoba. Castillo chipping it forward. Cordoba's there. What a save by Cortez. Marrera, Casada Thorn in traffic. Can he dribble out of it? He kind of can as he brings it toward the near side. Gets past the defender. Crosses it in looking for Cordero. But Pineda will come in off of his line and settle things down. We will look to make a few changes as our midfield is looking a bit knackered. Chacon probably going to be coming off in a minute. Ramon. Feeding Marrera. Back out for Ramon. Nice give and go. Chipping it into the middle. Chacon heading it forward. Ramon can't get there. Chacon dropping it down. But Ortiz takes over. Plays it to Castillo. And here comes Sporting the other way again. Rubiano ahead. Rojas taking a shot from range. That's going to miss everything. And we will have the opportunity to make those changes. Casada Thorne will come off. Guillermo Sanchez coming in. He'll swap spots with Ramon and come in on the right-hand side. Alejandro Braun, little tired. He'll make way for Steven Aquista. Chacon is going to come out in place of Orlando Gallo, who wanted a bit more time. Three changes with 18 minutes remaining on the clock. And a final third throw in for Gonzalez. Looking at his options, we're in the 75th minute. Ramon in control. Can he make crossing magic? Uh-huh. Oh, except Sanchez can't get it on target. It will nick off the post and go out for a goal kick. Maybe we need to settle things down and shut up shop a little bit. I'm not sure. That was not a good delivery. As Smith takes over and immediately brings it back in. Crosses it over and Brian Rojas with the goal. Terrible mistake by Cortez. Just 
could not deliver the set kick to an area even remotely occupied by a Saprisa player. And Rojas ultimately makes us pay. So we're actually going to have to uh, step things up a little bit. Um, yes, well, we're going to change our... We're going to be a little bit more expressive. I don't like the pass in the space. doesn't seem to be working for us. We're going to knock the tempo up a little bit. And uh, I think we will play for set pieces because we seem to do well while playing for set pieces. Meanwhile, we're also going to demand more from our team. It looks like, however, uh, unless something changes in the four minutes added on, which I'm not anticipating at this point, we are going to go from 2-0 up to tie it at two, which means we went from three points to the good to only picking up one from this match. So yes, our winless streak is five, but at least we picked up a point off of the corner. Looked like we were in great shape. Marrero putting it past the goalkeeper to make it 1-0. However, they would return the favor. How Gonzalez was not offside, I have no idea. He was parked right in front of the keeper. Cartagena made it 2-1. I honestly don't know what I could have done about that. Rockovich shot. Ricochets off of Taylor standing on the 18-yard box. And they would add a third Alfaro turned, fired, and tucked one home. We did have David Hernandez starting this match in goal, trying to make a couple of changes. We would get one back, uh, Sanchez, with his eighth goal of the year. But again, it was too little, too late. We are now winless in our last six after that run that we were on. Magically, however, it still remains not all doom and gloom. Somehow we are still at the top of the table after 12 matches. So 10 left to go. Our lead has been trimmed to one. And the teams behind us are getting closer and closer. Alajuelense, one point behind us. Punto Arenas, two points behind us. Herediano, somehow, four points behind us. We've given them so many opportunities to come back and get back into this. But they are on just as poor a run as we are. Under normal circumstances, I would think a home match against Municipal Liberia, the team that we absolutely destroyed to start things off, would be the panacea that we needed. And, well, I'd be right. Sanchez delivering the goal to make it 1-0, then getting it back from Lopez into the box, slotting it between two defenders for his second of the match. 2-0 Saprisa. Liberia would get one back. As Canberra Nero going pretty much coast to coast, sending it into the middle. Sakaria with the goal to half the Saprisa lead. But that is when we found a new gear. Aquista, the Lopez flipping it forward. There's Sanchez's hat trick. 3 1 Saprisa. Can we get a fourth? Of course you can get a fourth. We're watching the highlight, aren't we? Cordero feeding it ahead. Castro putting it home. His 16th of the year. 4-1, and then Braun off of the set piece, picking out the top corner to make it 5-1, and a healthy victory, a very solid performance all around, and I hope that this is just the beginning of us getting back on track. Maybe a little home cooking was all we needed, picking up a 4-1 victory at the Ricardo Saprisa Aima against AD Sarchi Nassim Innocenti picking up his third goal. Edinho tied things up in the 41st minute, but the second half is where Saprisa took over. A goal for Diego Moreira, a pair for Edward Lopez, just two minutes apart. Three chances created by Ramon, picked up a pair of assists. Anything bad I may have said about him, I absolutely take back. Thought we could make it three in a row as we traveled on the road to Cariari Picochi, but it just was not our day. Cortez misjudging the cross. Zapata making us pay 1-0 the score just before halftime. And then Zapata making the turn on the counterattack. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Cariari Picochi players in the box. He could have picked out any one of them. Beating Cortez 2-0 your final score. We just did absolutely nothing even though we managed more shots on goal than them none of them really looked like they were going to threaten Pedro and Dong and our win streak comes to a close at two and unfortunately that wasn't the end of the bad news as Punto Arenas have passed us 
on the table. We've got a four-point lead over Herediano, who continues to be mediocre at best right now. Alajuense, Cartaginez, none of them, sporting even, can decide who wants to step up and try to take us on. Punta Arenas, though, said, we got this. Now, one point clear, even though we do have a superior goal difference. Luckily for us, we are back at home and we are taking on the team sitting at the bottom of the table. We have gotten our youth and take a couple of top talents, including a goalkeeper in Guillermo Mora. Again, aerial reach is the problem. He's not great at one-on-ones either. So to call him a top talent, to me, probably is not what we're looking at. Uh, he is an assertive player, which could be an issue. Being 5'10", and again, not being good with the one-on-ones. Positioning and handling are okay. Good communication. Uh, he's got to work on his command of the areas. Concentration levels, though, also very troubling. Player who may be a little bit more ready to step in is 15-year-old Costa Rica Spanish dual national Victor Morrow. Pretty good with the long shots. Excellent first touch and technique. Uh, he's got some flair to him. Good decision-making skills. Not the fleetest of foot. Only 5'9", not the greatest in the air, but some workable aspects to him. Maybe, possibly, there could be a place on the squad at some point for Morrow. We start off the closing stage very successful with the system that we had set up. Every time that we have attempted to make a change to that, it hasn't quite worked out. We tried to be a little bit more defensively responsible in the last match because we were out on the road that didn't work we tried to change the system last episode in the CONCACAF Champions Cup second leg on the road that didn't work so we're going to go back with what we know has worked doesn't work all the time but it's worked more times than not we are rotating the squad around a little bit it's only a couple of days since the last match we're taking on the team at the bottom of the table Cortez is going to start in goal. Casada, Thorne, Innocente, and Gubane, and Herrera will be the back four. Manning the midfield will be Steven Aquista and Alejandro Braun. Ramon and Johnny Castro will be out on the wings. Morera is going to man the 10, and leading the line is Edward Lopez. Of our two recent wins, both of them have come at home. If we can keep that trend going, it will set us up for a fantastic finish to the season in tomorrow's episode. Six left to go after this one. Just sitting one point behind Punta Arenas. If we can secure this victory, we go back to the top of the table, and that is where we need to be, assuming Punta Arenas does not win. Are they even in action right now? They are. They are at home against Perez. Zeladon tied at one six minutes into the match. Brand with the corner. Knocked away by the keeper coming off his line. Ramon up. Castro can't tuck it in, but the rebound off of the post comes to Edward Lopez. His 18th of the year, and Saprisa leads 1-0. Frankly, that one was all on the goalkeeper. Segari came to punch it out, which left him out of position as we were able to recycle it quickly. First shot missed the open net, but luckily it came right to the foot of Edward Lopez, who was able to make them pay. Punta Arena still drawing 1-1, so a victory here would most definitely put us back into first place on the table with six games left to go. Innocente, the brand, throwing it forward, looking for Lopez, headed away by Renato. Brand wins it back. Castro's got it. He's got a little bit of a knock. We're going to keep an eye on him. He's taken down in the box, adding insult to injury. Zimmerman trips him up, but the penalty has been awarded. And Brand will step up to take it, and he will deliver it into the bottom corner. 2-0 Saprisa, Alejandro Brand making good from the spot. And it was a goal that we needed because Punta Arenas has just taken a 2-1 lead. Uh, not a great corner there. For San Carlos. San Carlos coming into this match sitting at the bottom of the table on nine points, just the one win. So they have managed six draws in the 19 matches that they have. 19 matches? They haven't played 19 matches. Nobody's played 19 matches. 45 minutes in the books, 
And Ramon looking to add to it off of the corner. Trying to pick out Innocente. He does. It looks like it deflected off of the head of one of the defenders. It doesn't matter. Innocente is going to get credit for the goal. His fourth of the year. And more set-piece magic. More chances being created by Ramon. And it's exactly as I thought it was. Innocente off of the head of Kawan. Past the goalkeeper. I think it was going in anyway. But unfortunate for the uh, San Carlos defense. But a 3-0 lead for Saprisa. Brand, can we make it 4? No, Ngame can't get his head on it. Montero able to clear. Aquista settling it down. Playing it across for Marrera. On a yellow card. Feeding it into the middle. He's got Brand. He'll turn. What a pass. Ramon across for Lopez. But it looks like Ramon may have been... Offside, the goal not going to stand as on the far sideline, the assistance flag did go up. Yeah, oh my goodness gracious. Literally, if the defender wasn't leaning forward, Ramon would have been onside. Still, though, a three goal lead doing exactly what we need to do. Unfortunately for us, Punta Arenas also taking care of business in their match. They're leading 2 1. So, if things remain as they currently stand, we will still be in second place by one single point. And the shame of it all is we have had opportunities with points being dropped by our opposition left, right, and center. Great touch by Ramon. Tucks it home. His eighth goal of the year. That will make up for the one that got called back. Let's get some changes uh, made. Emmanuel Chacon coming in for Bran, who is looking a little bit tired. Nassim Innocente will make way for Gerald Taylor. Johnny Castro, we will give him a blow and give Pablo Alfaro an opportunity to get into this match. Alfaro hasn't uh, really played, frankly, at all. 17 years old. We're going to give him his season debut, or at least the season debut under Billy Flynn. 4-0, your scorer. Punta Arena still leading Perez Zaladon. 2-1. It's probably going to end up that way. Herediano, though, set to lose another match. So, Ala Walense also winning with a 56th-minute goal from Villa Lobos. They're up 1-0. Punta Arenas is up 2-0, and we are going to cruise to a 4-0 victory, unless we can get one here in second half stoppage time. Taylor to Chacon, forward, Ramon, heads it back, and Gumbame has it knocked off of his foot, and Montero looking to go the other way for San Carlos. Can we maintain the clean sheet? Morris shoots, Cortez makes the save, puts it out behind, but a corner opportunity for San Carlos. 4-0, I mean, 4-1 doesn't really change much of anything, but it would be nice to have that mental momentum knowing that we kept the opposition off of the score sheet. Corner headed away, but Velasquez tracks it down, plays it to Renato along the edge of the box, back for Velasquez. Being tightly marked, Renato picked off by Lopez. He'll clear that one out, and that, my friends, is going to do it. 4-0 is your final score and this match was really all Saprisa except for the last minute and a half or so. Possession numbers tilted a bit towards San Carlos. That's not really the game that we are playing here, which is quite the difference from our time at Vancouver FC. But we are throwing balls on the net. We're finding the target. And most importantly, we are finding the back of the net. Lopez, Brand, Innocente, and Ramon all in this match. We've got six to go, and we are in a... Well, we're in as good a position as we possibly could be, given the circumstances. I mean, honestly, you got to be impressed with the way I was able to uh, polish up that turd. We've got Santos on the road coming up next. Three of our final six matches at home. We just need to find a way to pull ourselves back to the top of the table and find our way above Punta Arenas. We do take them on. We take them on at home three points that we massively need. If you like this episode, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not. If you've enjoyed the content, there may be others that will. The best way to get it in front of them is to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for your support. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, bye bye